When we use fruit flies in the lab, we tend to have to put them to sleep to make up our appropriate matings. And when we do this, we generally use a compound called Flynap. And Flynap smells terrible. No one likes the way it smells. And principally, this is because it's composed of 50% of TEA, or triethylamine. Triethylamine is an organic molecule that is uh, used to solubilize proteins in the lab, and that's one of the reasons it puts flies to sleep readily. Uh, in order for safety requirements, we generally use Flynap under the hood, but it also has physiological implications to the fly itself. It takes them a long time to wake up, and obviously students don't want to be breathing triethylamine for a long period of time. So we've come up with a technique and a method to use ice and cold temperatures to keep fly, put flies asleep, to keep them asleep, to while we sort them and make up new vials for new matings. And that's what we'll be demonstrating at this point in time. Obviously, the first thing you need is a vial, a stock vial of fruit flies. Here we just have our stock vial of wild type fruit flies and we'll need a transfer vial. So now we normally would transfer the fruit flies from the stock vial into the transfer vial. And of course, we need to be able to put them to sleep. As a result, we have a bucket filled with ice, just crushed ice. And on the stage of our microscope, we place paper towels because we don't want to get the stage wet. And we use a simple ice pack used in sending cold materials through the mail, covered with just a small sheet of plain typewriter paper or copier paper. This then will become the stage from which we can view the flies, separate them by whatever phenotype you're interested in discerning, and then be able to put them into the new mating vial. So let's begin. In order to get the flies, if you notice, the flies all organize at the very top of the vial, and that is because they are negatively geotaxic, that is, they move away from gravity. And so in order to get them to, if we were just to take the cap off, the flies would fly away. We don't want that. So now what we want, so we just give them a gentle tap, and if you notice, they will all fall to the bottom. This is classic way to transfer flies. Now I should say that you don't want to hammer the flies down very hard because you will give them a concussion. And yes, I know it's strange, but flies can get a concussion. So what you want to do is gently tap them and get ready to transfer them into the transfer vial. It takes a little bit of practice, but I find that these larger vials, because they're made of a thick plastic, make it very, very easy to transfer the flies. So what we're going to do is we're going to tap the flies to the bottom of the container, take the top off, and then place the transfer vial right on top. Now you can see that the flies are already beginning to fly into the new vial because while they are negatively geotaxic, they are also positively phototaxic. And so they go towards the light and away from gravity. However, they don't go fast enough for our purposes. So what we're going to do is actually turn the vial upside down, giving them a quick tap. And notice they're now all on the bottom, and we just cover them up, and they're now here. I always use my palm to cover the stock vial in case we miss a few flies. And then we can tap it and put the cap back on it. At this point, we now have flies in the transfer vial, and we have to put them to sleep. Normally, we would try to slide a little dropper with TEA or with the fly nap into this vial, but what we're going to do is submerge the vial in ice. And it's important to get the vial completely submerged up to the neck so that the flies that are trying to get away from the cold toward the light and away from gravity, they all go to sleep. With vials this size, it takes approximately two minutes for them to go completely asleep. 
And it's not a terrible idea just to tap it gently about halfway through so that flies that are sticking around the stopper trying to keep warm fall to the bottom and go to sleep. While you're waiting for your two minutes to progress, you need to label your vial. And so the new vial, we have a new, trans we have a new stock vial right here, and we are going to label it with the genotype these are wild type flies and so we indicate that they are wild type by using the plus plus designation. We also want to place the date on the vial so you will always date the vial. And then always put your initials on the vial because that tells any of the investigators or the class or the professor who actually made the vial of flies. Notably, we're going to fill this vial with 10 males and 10 females, and so we're also going to indicate on the vial the number of males and the number of females used to make up the mating. And now we wait two minutes. After two minutes have passed, we can then take the transfer vial out of the ice and while it's a little cloudy, all of the flies are asleep on the bottom of the vial. Now, we're going to place them on the cold plate, and if you feel, the white paper is now quite cold, and we're just going to put the flies on the white paper. And now, we're going to separate the flies by male and female. I always mark the paper with regard to position of males and females because believe it or not while you're working sometimes you forget which side you push the flies to. You can identify the males very quickly because they are smaller than females. Remember that sexual dimorphism in flies is such that females are always larger than males. You are also able to identify the males because the bottom portion of their abdomen is very dark black and females are very light. Notice that the flies are still asleep. They haven't begun to wake yet. I now have them separated into males and females and I'm just going to count 10 of each type so that we can transfer them into the vials. We take our newly labeled stock vial and all we have to do is sweep the counted flies into the stock vial. They are completely asleep. And in approximately three to five minutes, they will wake up and begin to be, to crawl around the vial and they'll begin the life of a fruit fly. <laughs> the remaining flies can be placed in another stock vial or disposed of. So it's been two minutes since we transferred the flies and notice that the flies that were transferred and asleep during the cold period are already up and moving around the new vial, their new home, and they show no ill effects of the cold temperatures. Notably, the flies that remain on the cold plate are still completely asleep and will remain asleep for upwards of five minutes. This is important because inexperienced fly pushers take more time to separate the flies than I do. So we've got the advantage, number one, of being able to maintain the flies asleep for a long period of time, even when under the light of a dissecting scope but also at the same time, if your students are particularly slow, begin by sorting fewer flies. So you don't have to sort the entire vial all at one time. You can do them in groups of 10 or 20 until the students get comfortable moving the flies around. And that's how we work with fruit flies and use cold temperature and ice to put them to sleep and make up new matings.